So this past weekend, I had the pleasure of going to the Amherst Railway Society train show in West Springfield. Uh, last year, I wasn't able to go uh, because I just couldn't make it. And so this year, I went for the first time. And let me tell you, I was really impressed. Uh, I was actually overwhelmed with the size of the uh, train show. Uh, if you guys are able to make it, it's definitely worth a trip uh, because it's just a huge, huge train show. There's four buildings dedicated to the train show. Uh, I was there for five hours and uh, I could not see everything. It just, uh, just couldn't do it. Um, I almost kind of felt rushed at some points. I couldn't really take my time because I wanted to be able to see uh, certain vendors that I knew we're going to be there um, and you know there you hear about some people spending two days there at the show and I I can believe that you can spend two days to really see everything you really need that kind of time so I was really impressed um, and I just wanted to share some thoughts about uh, some things I came across uh, one one thing being, I went to I made a made it a point to go to the Lionel booth, and uh, Ryan from Lionel was there. Uh, if you're not familiar, he makes YouTube videos uh, for Lionel, and um, so he's he's on YouTube pretty frequently. He's a Lionel uh, employee. Um, he does the design and engineering and planning for all of the uh, catalogs that Lionel releases, and. Um, so um, the the as you're probably aware, Lionel just released the 2019 Volume One catalog uh, just a couple days ago, and um, one of the things that's in it, one of the big uh, releases in it, is that they're coming out with Line Chief Plus 2.0, and it's a big improvement over the current Line Chief Plus in that um, the Line Chief Plus 2.0 does not come with its own remote they're doing away with that but you can run it on the universal remote you can run it via Bluetooth and for first time for the first time you can run it on your TMCC or legacy cab 2 remote which is uh, which is a, a big step forward um, not only that you can you can lash up a, a line chief plus 2.0 engine with a legacy engine you can lash them up together, which is a, which is a first, which is uh, that's pretty exciting. So when I saw Ryan at the show, I asked him. I said, "Is that true? Can you really lash up a Lion Chief Plus 2.0 engine with a Legacy engine?" And he said, "Yes, you can." Uh, another thing I learned uh, on my way to the show, I watched a, uh, I actually listened to a podcast uh, from no uh, a podcaster. Uh, the name is uh, Notch Six. Um, and it was an hour and a half podcast talking about the Lionel's 2019 Volume 1 catalog. And um, the podcaster interviews uh, Ryan from, Ly from uh, Lionel, who I just spoke of. And Ly uh, Ryan had talked about um, some of the things that they're going to be doing for the Volume 2 catalog that they might be coming out with. And supposedly they might be coming out with the uh, HW uh, Bush uh, 4141 locomotive. And they're also going to be releasing a four pack excursion, 21 inch excursion passenger car uh, under the UP name. Um, and it's, it's going to have the baggage car with the flag. It's going to have the uh, dome and then it's going to have the, um, the, the uh, observation at the end. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to uh, to getting those. This catalog is going to be coming out in about six months, and um, because of the the uh, celebration, the 150th anniversary of the Golden Spike at Promontory, Utah, coming up this spring, uh, Lionel plans to be doing releasing a lot of uh, Union Pacific stuff in their volume two. So I, I'm a um, I like to collect uh, Union Pacific stuff. I think they have really cool, uh, really cool uh, engines. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, that catalog.
So anyway, uh, on to, I'm going to talk briefly about what I got at the show, as you can see here, and then at the end I'm just going to show you some clips of what I took from uh, the show. I just showed some, uh, some of the bigger vendors at the, uh, at the uh, Amherst Railway show this past weekend. So without further ado, here we go. Uh, first up, I got the Hotwire Foam Factory kit. Uh, I'm, I, I have a hot wire cutter, but this one is a little different. This has got an engraver, um, and this black thing on the left is actually a depth. You can set the depth, so if you want to make mortar lines on, on you want to make like a, like a brick face and you want to make mortar lines, it sets the depth. You can set the depth of the engraver, and you just run it over the foam, and it... it makes the the mortar lines uh that you want to make in the um in the foam um and it's got a, a four inch uh wire um uh, like rod uh foam cutter and it's got the traditional wire cutter and then it's got the engraver so uh i just had to i, had, I was kind of excited about that uh, some of the rolling stock I got at the show, I'm a big fan of Railbox, so I saw this at the show and had to get it. I have one of these already, so this is my second one. Um, in my video uh, on the EOT and sound effects uh, tank car video, um, I indicated that, uh, that I needed to build my tank car collection. So I, I got these at a pretty decent price. The, uh, I got the three pack of the, the, uh, the, uh, the TILX tank cars. Uh, there's three of them in here. Uh, funny thing, when I left the show yesterday, there's a big rail yard just across the street uh, from, the, from the, uh, the Big E in West Springfield. And I saw a actual TILX uh, tank car that looked just like these, uh, the real thing. So I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, the next thing I got was, uh, this is, these are molds that I got from Bragdon Enterprises. Uh, and a funny story, uh, Eric Siegel from Eric's Trains, I'm sure you guys know who he is. He's, it's a very popular channel that he's got. He made a video about eight years ago about how he makes the, uh, he doesn't use plaster wrap, but he uses uh, this geodesic foam and cast resin, uh, and he uses it with the uh, screen mesh that you use and that you see in like uh, uh, window screens and door screens. And he uses that as a, as a, uh, <clears throat> as a base for his, uh, for his, for his railroad and he uses this, it's called geodesic foam, and he uses it and puts it in these molds. Instead of using hydrocal, he uses this geodesic foam, and there's two parts of it. You've got the foam, and then you've got the cast resin, and you have to mix the parts A and B of the foam and the A and B of the cast resin together. Uh, and I'm not going to go into too much detail. I know a little bit about how to do it, but uh, it's going to be... Uh, going to be an experiment here. It's going to be interesting when I'm ready to make these these molds out of this geodesic foam. But the reason why I got this is because on my uh, some parts of my layout, the, uh, the, the, there's parts that are curved that I need to be able to have. I want to have the rock face conform to the, the curvature of, of like, a, like a rock face or a um, or a, or a uh, uh, retaining wall, and when you pull these from the mold, they're for the first 20 minutes they're they're somewhat flexible, and so you can bend them, uh, and that's the reason why I wanted to uh, use this, and I probably will use these with the uh, the hydrocal too, but I was really excited about these molds. They're 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 uh, they're really nice looking, and you can see I I ended up getting. Uh, six of them. I went a little crazy on the molds, but um, they're just all different patterns. And then over here are some retaining walls that I got. This is a big one uh, that I think maybe what I'll use, I'll use it over here because I'm going to have to have a retaining wall on this, on this uh, raised part here. 
and I figure I can use uh, this big retaining wall. I just cut it down to the size to size. Uh, and I also ended up getting this weathering uh, dark rust um, weathering powder. So that's about it for what I got at the show. And um, now I'll show you guys some clips of, um, of what I took from the show this past weekend.
Oh, no, this is a mistake. Yeah, I'll put a plug later on. 